Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing another Tasty Blender 2.81 tutorial. We are making motion graphics. We're gonna make it from scratch. We'll be using some of the knowledge we acquire from some other tutorials I made. We'll try to model everything, animate everything, make shaders, lighting, and then render everything out. This is especially useful for beginners, but I think that some more advanced users might also find a couple of tricks to try. Without losing any time, let's get into it. Open up Blender 2.81, but before we delete anything, we have to think about our animation. What I want to do today is a sphere that's made out of many spheres, and then control the force inside of the sphere to make the particles shift around. I know what my idea is, and I can plan out what I'm gonna need. I'm gonna need a particle system, I'm gonna need a collision object, and I'm going to need a particle instance a background maybe, some lighting, and that's basically it. So let's start by deleting everything in the scene. Pressing A twice, delete. We're gonna add a cube, which is going to be our system. We're gonna move it back a bit on the Y axis. So we're gonna name this one system. We're gonna add a UV sphere, just make it just a bit bigger by pressing S and the scaling with control and the mouse. We're going to rename this to Collision, and we're going to duplicate the sphere, move it back, scale it down to about 0.4, and we're going to rename it into Particle. So that's going to be our Particle, and this is going to be our Collision. System, the cube. Before we move on, we just have to click uh, a two times and control a scale so everything will work correctly when we set up the physics. We're going to set a collision on our collision sphere which is going to have damping 0 08 to 0 09 and friction to 0 0809. These are just ballpark values so you can adjust them later if you need to. The next one is going to be our system so we get to set the particle system next. We're going to add the particle system. We have to think about how long our animation is actually going to be. I usually make them 250 frames long because I usually make them in 25 frames per second. Let's set the lifetime to, let's say, 250 for now, and we'll see if we need something more later. We're going to set the end of the animation to 1 so we can see the particles. We're going to go into the side view by pressing numpad 3. Press Z to go into wireframe, and in the source tab, we set emit from volume and distribution from grid. So we have this nice grid over here. Lower the resolution to, let's say, 6. That's going to be good enough. We don't need this anymore, so we can just collapse it. So next, we go into render as object, select the instance, which is going to be our particle over here, and increase the size to 0.280. This is going to be good enough. If we need to, we can always take care of the scale later. We can start with adding a force inside of the sphere. If you don't have your cursor in the world origin, you can do that by pressing Shift S and then selecting cursor to world origin. We're going to add a force field force. Shift A, force field force. This force field, we're going to set the strength to a minus 250, about minus 250, because we want to have a really strong negative force that attracts the particles, and it has to be very quick, because we just want the particles to stick immediately to the surface. We don't want them hovering around. And the flow, we can increase to about 7 or 8, depending on how they behave. Now, if we start the animation, we see that they collide with the sphere. Perfectly fine, but we want them to go around the whole sphere. In our particle system, we're going to go under physics, we're going to change physics types to fluid, and we'll change the stiffness to about 0 0.1, and viscosity to 3. We're also going to go into the advanced tab, set the repulsion factor to 1.9, and interaction radius, ju just bump it up slightly to 1.03. Another thing that it's worth doing is going to the force field settings, self-effect, and choose the type 1 to be force. 
we want to have a very low strength force so we're going to do 0 0.02 strength and then we're going to take gravitation and we get this now we have this jittering problem over here so how can we solve it well basically we can just play around with the effect we can see how this affects if we lower the flow we can see if we lower the strength a bit so it's maybe minus 100 like so so we can see what happens if it's a bit lower we also have gravity enabled so it distributes the force a bit differently we can also decrease the flow a bit so it immediately jumps but i think a flow of eight works completely fine Again, fine-tune your system. The moment you see that wiggling, you know that you've gone a bit too far. So try and find the sweet spot where the particles don't wiggle anymore. Now, we don't want the whole sphere to be covered, so this is completely fine. So when we get our movement, we don't want to cover the whole sphere completely because we will be controlling the force emitter. Now, we can try right now and see how it will behave. So if we select our force and then press G to move it around, we can actually see that it's moving and attracting the balls along the surface of the sphere. But we can see that there are a couple of problems. When you move it away, it attracts all of the spheres like so. So we want them to move like this. Let's try and increase to minus 50 and let's see what happens when we do that. And if we move the sphere slightly, how will that work? Another thing that we can do to help us is basically turning on rotation and choosing the dynamic rotation. Dynamic rotation means that when the particle hits, it's going to deflect at a certain angle. Now we can again try and mo modify our strength. We can see what starts happening if we, let's say, put it at minus 200. Again, this is an approach where you just have to test it out, see how it works, try moving the force a bit so you can see what's happening to the particles. When we have a movement that we're happy with, we can then proceed with the next step, which is going to be animating the force. The way we are going to do this is that we're going to select our force over here. We're going to turn on auto keying, and then we're going to play the animation, press G and shift, and then slightly move the force inside of the sphere. And we try to move it around just to get a bit of movement. Now again, look at it from different angles, try to see if you're happy with the movement. And when you get a type of movement that you're completely happy with, then we can start baking the animation. If you don't like the movement, you can simply press Ctrl Z and start again. Auto key, press play, G, shift, and then try moving the particles around, like so. When you get an animation that you're happy with, then you can bake the particle system. And you do that by selecting the particle system, make sure that you're on frame 1, and under bake, which is in cache, you just press bake. And it's going to bake your system. We are just going to add a mesh and a plane in the center. We're going to scale it up. Don't forget to turn off auto keying. And we're going to scale it up, put it down a bit. We're going to choose this angle over here. So on the left side, press E for extrude and then Z to extrude it on the Z axis. Go into object mode, control A for scale, so we reset the scale, press control B, and then put just a couple of segments, like so. W shade smooth, and we can also shade smooth our particle over here, W shade smooth. Now that we have our background setup and our particle setup, it's time to work on shaders. Choose our particle, and we're going to split our screen. On our second screen, we're going to choose Shader, press N to collapse the side view. Let's zoom in into our particle and go into Look Development. Add a material. The material we're going to call it Particle underscore Gradient. And we're going to do a Gradient Shader. We just choose the principal BSDF, press Ctrl T. And now that we have our texture coordinate and mapping, 
we just delete the image texture, add the gradient texture, add the color ramp here. We're going to connect the generator to the vector input in mapping, the vector output to the gradient texture input of the vector. The gradient texture color, we can actually connect to the factorial, and we can connect the color of the color ramp to the base color of our principled BSDF. What are we going to do here is we're going to make a tritone gradient. Basically, that means we're using three colors. The easiest way we can do this is basically searching on UI Gradients. UI Gradients is a website that gives you different hex codes for gradients. So I'm just going to choose one that I like. Let's say I'm going to choose Wiretap, which is a violet, a red, and an orange type of vibe. I'm just going to click on one of the colors. I'm going to click in the color ramp and paste the code. I'm going to click this plus sign, so I create one middle node. I'm going to copy the middle value into the middle node, and I'm going to choose the white in the end and copy the last hex code. With this, I have a gradient texture on my particle. Now that we have our particle gradient, we can set also our background. I'm just going to choose new name it background, and we're going to do the same thing over here. Control C, while having selected the principled BSDF, just put a gradient texture over here and a color ramp over here. You can organize these nodes as however you please, I just like them in this order. Choose generated, vector to vector, color to factorial, and then color to base color. For our background, I'm just going to return to UI gradients and I'm going to choose a very light color, for example, delicate. And I'm going to copy these hex codes into our shaders. And I get a very soft background. Now, after we've done this, we can actually start setting up some sort of lighting so we can more easily gauge what's happening with our shaders. If we go into render view, you can see we get this. It's because I've been using Eevee all of this time. I'm just going to go into render properties, change to cycles, feature set to experimental, device to GPU, 250 samples, it's what I usually uh, use. I have a total of seven, diffuse and glossy, I leave them to three, and then I do transmission to seven. In direct light, usually set it to four and 1.5 for filter glossy. In the color management, when I use filmic, I usually go with medium high contrast to high contrast. And if I need to, I then change the exposure and gamma. But this is, again, when I see what's happening in scene. Right now, if we press our render, again, not very impressive. We're not gonna use mesh lights today because I think that HDRIs are going to work much better. The way you set up an HDRI, you just go into this color tab over here in your world properties, choose this, the small circle in the right corner, environment texture, and then open. Choose an HDRI, the one that you like, and set it in. If we go into our rendered view, this is what we end up with. Now, when I look at this, I would like to have just a bit more glossiness on my material. So I'm just going to drop down the roughness in our materials tab, specular tint to about 0.3, and the specular, let's say I'm just going to bump it up to 0.6. Yeah. I don't want it to be too glossy, but I also don't want it to be too dull. The last thing I have to do here is set up the camera. What I'm going to do, just shift A, add camera, then control alt zero so you can basically set the camera from your viewport so i'm just going to go into this output properties tab over here and change the x resolution to 180 like so i'm just going to center the camera just a bit better like so and i can still move my background around a bit very important here, just choose the render region. So whenever you go into your rendered view, you're just going to be shown whatever it's in your camera view. 
return of our collision, we can see that we have a nice sphere that's formed out of many colorful spheres. Now it's time to render this. Usually what I do is color depth, I do it 16, compression to 100. When I go to render settings, I usually go into performance, uh, make sure you have auto tile size on because it's like an add-on that calculates the right value for your graphics card. After that, I go into my layer properties view. I choose denoising data because I'm going to be using the Intel denoiser. Just split the screen, choose the compositor now, and to collapse and click on use nodes and backdrop. So this is going to give you these two guys over here. We're going to add a denoise like so, noisy image, denoising normal and denoising albedo. And let's put in a viewer node so we can just see what's what's happening. Right now, it's not going to show anything because we haven't rendered anything. So we just choose a frame that we think is going to be interesting enough. Let's say this one and let's render it out. After my rendering has been done, it's going to show in my compositor. So I can just collapse this window to the left one and see if I can just improve it a bit. Right now, I just want to play around with some of the settings in terms of color management. So I would just go try and change the exposure, maybe change the gamma, like lower it down, try to get a bit more range on the whole image before I start moving everything out. Basically, I usually go for very let's say high key stuff, high key type of lighting. But again, this, if you want to try, test, see what your preference is going to be. After this step, I'm just going to set it up for rendering. What I do is just choose the output and I'm going to render it out as a image sequence. So basically, I choose my output. I choose my folder. I would recommend that you make a separate folder and just press Control F12 and it's going to render everything from 0 to 250. However, we know that in our 0 to, let's say, 50, 60, we still have the system functioning. So one less thing to take into account is just going to the beginning, sliding the slider to see where our system starts to move, so where our force starts to move. And when we see the initial movement, that's where our start is going to be. So we just change the start from 1 to 40 over here, where it says start. And basically we have an animation that starts from 40, continues to 250. So this is it. This is it for our first full-on tutorial in the sense of making something from scratch and finishing it. We've learned everything that has to do with setting up the scene, with animating the scene, creating shaders, lighting, and render settings. These are just basic values. If you want to, you can play around with them, test stuff out, and see what you actually like. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, leave a like, leave a comment. I always appreciate those. Subscribe because I have more of these coming in the future. And see you in the next one. Bye.